ladies and gentlemen, boys, men of all ages, we have a very special video for you guys today. And I'm super happy to have an Element Enduro Trail Runner sitting in front of me. It's going to be a great video, guys. Let's dive right into it. I know you're wondering, well, what am I going to do with this old Enduro sitting here in front of me in this box? I'm really glad you guys asked that. What we are going to do with this bad boy, since, you know, since it has the beautiful independent front suspension, what we're going to do is dive into making this, I believe, what, um, what the QCRC Element Enduro should be. Um, and it should be... I've had this idea in the background for a long time. I've been kind of working on it here and there. I've been tossing some ideas around in my head. I've been doing a bunch of different things and finally I came up with this idea and I, I'm, I'm really happy about it. This is, this is the idea, this is the movement and this is exactly what I wanna do. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Go ahead and tell me, Quaid. Quaid, it's already been done, man. Quaid, the, this company has this, man. You can go buy one. Quaid, the, they have it too. You can go and buy that. Quaid, this guy also, also has it. Guys, guys, guys. Easy, okay, easy. I get that, I know, I know, okay, I know. I know everybody's got this. I know everybody does it, but not everybody does it like this. And that's what I love. And I haven't done it, so that means I have to do it. Guys, what we're gonna do with this beautiful chassis in front of us, this beautiful unit, is turn it into the most awesome Raptor that I can come up with in my head. We have some suspension components we have designed here in-house at QCRC. We have some beautiful shock setup we're going to throw on this bad boy. And we have a super mint, very, very minty, detailed hard body. Guys, welcome to the Element Garage. In front of me here, we have an Element Enduro Trail Runner. This is the um, test subject and the little donation chassis to our latest and greatest product here at QCRC Hobbies. I am um, super excited for this one, actually. This um, this unit has been great. It's been a very good um, truck for what it is. We've taken out the mini trails. The independent front suspension has been phenomenal. I actually do really enjoy this truck in its current form. I do eventually probably want to get the Tacoma version they make of this guy, just with that Tacoma body. Um, this 400 body is not going to go to waste, so don't worry. We're definitely going to do something else with this guy and maybe probably put him on another one of these chassis. But I really want to experiment with this. I really want to take this time and kind of see what we can make with this chassis and see how cool we can bring to life my vision in my head and bring it out to you guys and show you how cool this thing is. And I have something else in store up my sleeve. You know, I really have sleeves on right now, but something else up my sleeve for later this week that I think you guys are really going to love. And this is going to tie in absolutely perfect. And if you know, then you already know. But I really don't think any of you guys know. You're not that slick. You're pretty slick, but you're not that slick. Go ahead and lay some products on the table now and show you exactly everything we have in store for this chassis right here. Guys, in front of me is everything we're going to be needing for this bad boy. We have the full kit in front of us. We have everything down to the tires, down to the little 3D printed parts, down to the shocks. Guys, we're going to wrap these bad boy up in some nice method 1.9 wheels, the standard wheels. You cannot go wrong with those. Finish in a nice gloss black. We're gonna wrap those bad boys in these beautiful Proline BF Goodrich mud terrain tires. Super great compound, super good tire. We have a spare right here going on it, just need the wheel. We're gonna finish this guy up with some beautiful RC four wheel drive, officially licensed King Coilovers. On top of that, we are going to go with actual working external reservoir King Coilovers to match. I have eight shocks here in front of me, and I know, I know that seems a little extreme, and I don't know if we're gonna use all these guys. I do not know if we're going to use all of them, but we're dang sure we're going to try. We need some power here. We had to do something with all this traction and all this beautiful suspension we're going to have. We had to have something to put it to the ground, and that's where Castle really came in handy here, guys. We have the Sidewinder SCT brushless system sensor combo here. We have a 3800 kV motor. We have the beautiful little speed controller they offer for us. Everything is 100% waterproof, element proof. And to wrap this up, this project, we're using some custom in-house prototype QCRC suspension components. This is going to be a long travel kit for your element. We are prototyping this guy right now. You guys are going to watch this unfold firsthand. 
There's been a lot of progress made with this kit. I'm pretty happy with it, but I'm not 110% satisfied. So that's where all this testing comes in. We're gonna throw some big power at it. We're gonna throw some big jumps in it and a lot of traction. And I'm super excited to bring this to you. Let's go ahead and dive in guys and get all these parts thrown in this truck. I am really excited to see how this is gonna unfold. Guys, here we are in the QCRC workshop. We have the element on the lift right here. First thing we're gonna go ahead and need to do is pop this body off. Once we have that guy set to the side, we can dive into this guy. Now he is a little dirty. It was just rinsed off on this last little adventure. What we're gonna need to address first is taking apart this rear suspension. Take out these two millimeter bolts on the bottom, on the other side as well, and this will take our shock loose. First, we're gonna wanna get the rear tires off. It should be a seven millimeter nut. We'll go ahead and back, back these back tires off, and then we'll go ahead and start disassembling our shock. Once both the rear wheels are off, we can go ahead and remove the shock. There's gonna be a two millimeter screw at the bottom and a two millimeter screw at the top, and then I'll take both these shocks off. Okay, now to note, once we have the shock off, you're gonna see the rear suspension right here is gonna drop completely down, and these bottom trailing arms are gonna come loose from the axle. You kinda look like this, your axle's just gonna be wobbling. Recommend the car on a stance, so that way you don't have to really deal with the car falling or anything, and you can have the suspension be free. Once we have this right here, now we're gonna go ahead and go to the front up here, and we're gonna go ahead and take all four of these arms off. On the back right here, we have one long screw that's gonna go through both of these top bars you can see right here. We're gonna go ahead and remove this guy all together. Once that guy is removed, you're gonna see this axle drop all the way down like this, and we're really just gonna be hanging by this drive shaft. That's perfectly fine. What we can do in this scenario is go ahead and slide this out and just remove this rear axle completely and set it to the side. After we do that, if you guys wanna look really closely right here, we have four screws we're gonna to need to remove. Two on either side. We have one that's gonna come through the bottom of the chassis towards those inner arms, and then one that's gonna be at the top of the frame towards the top of the arms. And we'll go ahead and do that now. Now the top ones do have a nut right here on the inside that I am holding. It's just gonna be a 5.5 millimeter nut. We're gonna set that to the side for later use. You can just hold it with your fingers or a pair of pliers because I don't think you can get a nut driver in there and it should come out easily. That screw is also gonna stay right here in the chassis, but you're gonna be able to take the traction bar and pull it over here to the side. Now the bottom screw right here in the bottom is a long set screw. It's gonna have a inset hex inside of it, not like an actual screw piece. This guy is going to be a 1.5 millimeter and we're gonna go ahead and slide that in like this. And you go ahead and unscrew this guy by hand and he's gonna come out from the whole side. There's one on each side looks like this. It's kind of like a set screw. For Once we have the, all of that disassembled, we have really nothing on the back of our truck. We don't have the axle, the trailing arms or anything. We're gonna begin to the top of the frame now. And we're gonna go ahead and start taking off some of the suspension components to put our high clearance mounts on there for these longer shocks to add that long travel ability to here. So right here is the two millimeter screws I was speaking of. We're gonna go remove these two and the two on the other side and that'll let this whole kind of rear body mount and shock mount come off the truck. Now we're ready to take our new long travel arms and bolt them to the truck. What I wanted to note here, guys, is the left and the right side. You're going to notice these bars are going to be in an opposite orientation on each end. The bottom bar is going to be shaped to the left and the top bar is gonna be shaped to the right. Just note this orientation when you put it on the truck. I'll try to do this as good as I can for you when I'm putting it on the truck to explain it. It's gonna to go to the same angle as the factory arms. You see right here, they have an angle this way and an angle this way. It's the same thing here. That we make sure everything was completely bolt on and went on super smooth. I'm just hopefully this will help you guys see. We have a screw sticking out still from the top side. We're gonna go ahead and line this guy up and he's gonna bolt flush against the frame like that. That's gonna push this arm to the inside, to the center here, to where I bolt up to the top of the axle. Both these guys screwed in here using that factory screw still went through the frame on both sides. It kind of gives you an idea of what your bar should look like. And then once you're done and you have those in the right position, we can go ahead and take this little 5.5 millimeter nut from the factory. We're gonna screw it on the end of this guy. You don't wanna tighten it up too tight. You just wanna have it snug. That way we can have plenty of flex in this bar for the suspension travel. Once we have those nuts in here, I wanted to show you kind of how tight these things should be. You see how I can just flex this very, very easily. It's still stays in place with a little bit of form. 
but it is super easy to move. That's exactly how I want these. We don't want these following down. One thing to note is you do not have to worry about, well, Quaid, what if I don't tighten the screw all the way? Is it not gonna come loose? No, we're utilizing the factory washers and everything here. So this is a nylon lock nut and it's not gonna back off even if it's not snug all the way tight, squeezing this thing to death. This is exactly how we want it, very flexible. For the next step, we're gonna want the bar facing down just like this, slide it into the hole and we're gonna tighten this 1.5 into the bar. Same thing with these bars, we're gonna notice we have the set screw put all the way in here. It's, it's almost flush with the bottom of the skid plate, same with this other side, and these guys can move completely freely just like that. Now once we have these arms in place, you're gonna look something like this. You're gonna have the two bars in the top coming to the center. You're gonna have the two bottom bars coming outside to the outside of the wheels. We can go ahead and take our axle and begin to set this guy up here and I'll show you how to line it up. Like this, give you a more detailed view. What we're gonna do is take our top bar, slide this guy into the top of this axle like this, and then take our other bar and do the exact same. Just like that, once these guys are in here, we can slide this axle up until it lines up for the, both the bars with the holes. And once that is in there, then we can go and proceed to put this screw through both the bars. Once we have our screw installed in the top of these traction bars, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have our nylon nut screwed on the other side. Again, you do not want this super tight. You want it snug. The nylon nut is gonna keep the screw from backing out so it doesn't work, come loose on the trail. And what we wanna make sure is we have full suspension flex just like this and everything moves super, super freely. Just like that, guys. Guys, if you begin to notice that your suspension is not moving as freely as this one and it's not like flexing as easily and it's kind of binding up in a sense, then you have something way too tight. This stuff does not need to be over tight and does not need to be He-Man, Hulk down. This stuff just needs to be snug. You have these nylon washers in here to keep this stuff very loose, to keep it very free and moving and make sure that no screws are gonna back out because of that nylon nut being your little security. Guys, I'm gonna wrap up this video right here. This is gonna be part one in the series. I'm gonna stop here, we're at a good point. The next thing is gonna be adding our dual shock mounts and starting to add the shocks to the truck as well as the top mount once the trailing arms are all set we're kind of done with the bottom of the truck we're just going to throw those shocks on and call it a day if you guys enjoyed this please leave me a thumbs up think about subscribing to the channel i'm trying to do a bunch of in-depth reviews and a bunch of in-depth installations like this to help provide value to the guys and bring some entertainment as well i try to bring it fun make it not just as you have to do this you have to do this i try to make it fun and entertaining guys so if you like the video leave me a like please it means the world to me thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you next time